What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ori. Welcome back to AM Island Vibes. Welcome back to another reaction video. I also want to say the same thing again. Today we're going to be reacting to what does it take to become an air traffic control at the world's busiest airport, Atlanta Hartfield, Hartfield Jackson? I think that's what it is. But anyway, Atlanta International Airport. Today by Business Insider, we're going to be doing a reaction video. If you guys are new to the channel, Spare myself a little bit. Smash that like button, subscribe, comment down below if you guys want to see more reaction videos from your boy, yeah, FFB. I'm trying to be your favorite. I'm trying to be FFB, your favorite fat boy on YouTube. That's F FFB, my favorite fat boy. But you know what I mean. But yeah. With that being said, let's get into the reaction video. I got 2452. Can take the jewelry, Mike. Yes, sir. Monica Natal, one, two, three, four. Hold on, let me close this. 100 feet above Atlanta Hartsfield. Damn. Air traffic controllers oversee the skies feet. of the world's busiest airport. Shout out to all air traffic controllers around the world. Atlanta 3, Atlanta Ground, one, two, seven, right, taxi, Atlanta, hold short, taxi, Dixon. They juggle 2,600 landings and departures a day in all kinds of weather. You can go upstairs and you can look out of that window and you can see nothing, nothing. at all and still have movement taking place on your airport. Damn. But air traffic controllers <laughs> can't mess up. Not only nope. are the lives on the line, but... This is the ultimate in domino effects. If something's going wrong in Atlanta, if there are major delays, it disrupts air travel all throughout the country. And Facts. You can too. Some of you guys can hear the music. Rally took us up inside the tallest control tower in the country to see what it really takes to be an air traffic controller. This is Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And these are its five runways. Five runways. And here's the control tower. It takes a rotating staff of 58 traffic controllers to keep the airport running. Pre-pandemic, they directed 190,000 flights through takeoff and landing each year. These controllers are responsible for any planes inside Atlanta Hartsfield airspace, five miles out and 4,000 feet above the airport. Once a plane enters Atlanta's territory, Air traffic controllers are in charge of communicating with pilots over radio. They direct pilots in the air through safe landings and pilots on the ground through takeoffs. The goal? Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. What can you do to help us be more efficient? Oh, he's um, the manager. Hard to feel Jackson, I was right. My safety in that equation. But the job isn't easy. There's a lot of dynamic decisions. If an aircraft is coming into land and they have to go around because of an unstable approach, the weather didn't cooperate, they couldn't get the runway in sight, you have to be ready to make a decision. To become a fully qualified Facts. controller, it can take up to five years of classroom, simulator, and on-the-job training. But if they make it, the average controller in Georgia makes $145,000. Some good cheese, boy! A job in Atlanta's tower is one of the most coveted ATC positions in the U.S. Candidates go through a rigorous hiring process, which can take... Somewhere just under a year, we're getting closer to six to nine months. Once they've been hired, incoming controllers start on the simulator. So any new controller that would come here, they would uh, initially come here and do book work, and then follow up with the book work, they would come in the simulator room. Okay. A new controller a will do multiple pass-fail scenarios. Oh, wait, but no, that's on not the simulator, different. they'll have fewer planes to juggle than the real deal in the tower. Then they'll have an evaluation, and then if they pass that evaluation, they can uh, head up to the towers. We have two controllers working there today. One of them is in training. There's never really a slow period to speak of. Though air traffic always picks up in the summer and days before and after holidays. But whether it's Christmas Eve or just another Tuesday, controllers have to stay focused. Always. We want people to be comfortable. We want people to be on edge. We want people to be at the top of their game. Controllers have to remember and monitor up to 30 planes at once. That's all okay. to think about, especially since studies show the human brain can only handle seven things in short-term memory at a time. And about 25 to 30 other Okay, pause. Before. Right, you see how they just say, they, they Atlanta probably manages 30. Even though here in the Turks and Caicos, we don't manage that much, but you know what I mean? It, imagine that, right? Okay, with them, they have radar and ADSB and all that good stuff, all the fancy equipment. Here in Providence, Seattle, it starts in Kansas. Imagine trying to do all of that, right? With no radar, you cannot see these planes. And you might be saying, wait, 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 wow, wow, wow. Yes, there are some airports around the world that don't have a uh, radar system. It's safe, it's safe. You wouldn't even know if it don't have it or not. See, look, nobody dead, but yeah. So imagine here, the controllers here in the Tracing Cake is no radar. So, 
that's something to think. I'm not something to think about. It. I'm just saying it's still safe. I'm pretty sure like, it's it's hundred percent safe. The FAA wouldn't regulate a airport uh, that isn't safe to travel into and out. So yeah, I'm just saying. Imagine that. A 12, 15 planes at one time on one controller. And he can't see it. He can't see Jack. But with, with radar, it's easier because you can see. Like, oh, wait, no, these too close. Turn this way. Oh, wait, no, he took. You know what I mean? It's easier. But yeah, it's still difficult. I was going to say it's easy job. It's easier. Monitor the tower, one, two, three, point eight, five. That's when they got off my frequency. So, you know, at one time, you could have a lot. Then one minute later, it could be all gone. Yep. The job's so mentally draining that the Federal Aviation Administration allows controllers to work for only two hours, two hours. before they're required to take a break. To help yep. make their work easier, controllers' jobs in the tower are highly specific. Each runway is assigned either takeoff or landings. That controller is just... Yeah, oh, we only get one. <laughs> we only got one. The controller who clears planes for takeoff or landing is called the local controller. There are two or three of them in the tower at once. This gentleman's working what we call Local 5. And local 5 is handling, at the moment, all the arrival aircraft coming in from the east. Then there's the ground controller. Listen! Focuses on A lot of people don't give the, this man right here, the ground controller, the respect he deserves. My opinion, forget about the approach controllers. I personally feel like you can be, ground control be one of the busiest positions. Especially, you know, dealing with pilots. You know, I want to say no offense. All the fans, I got a question for the pilots out there. I got a question. This don't work. Don't this work? All right. Specifically, last night, right? So, talking. Say, clear the guy. Okay. Just say for um, November 626. Ah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's Spider Man 626. Anyway, 626 Quebec Sierra. Clear from the Provo to Opalaki Airport via, listen now, direct Nassau, which spells Zulu Quebec Alpha, for the Waving 5 arrival after departure initially, maintain initial altitude of flight level 060. Squawk, I can remember the squawk, the squawk was 4767. 4767. Listen to a buddy tell me, read back to me. Okay, uh, 68626 six, Quebec Sierra is clear to Opalaka via direct, some stupid face he say, Zulu Quebec Papa or Zulu Quebec Papa? Then the, then the Flipper 7 arrival after the departure, initial altitude at 3,000 feet, squad, some weird number, let's start with that, squad 7862. I should fight you. I really should fight you. Like, bro, huh? How? Where did you get these? Where did you? Aren't you listening to me, bro? I said wave and fly. You said a whole different airport. The wave and fly, the, the, the flipper seven could take you into, um, into, uh, into Opalaka? Wait. I think the flipper seven can. I believe it could. No! The Flipper 7 can't take you to no damn Opalaka. They take you to Miami International. But, yes. So this nigga. I'm like, bro, where did you hear any of this? I, I, I did not say that, dude. I really did not. So anyway, <laughs> I had to repeat myself several different, not several times, I had to repeat myself again. And just letting you know, a lot of controllers don't like to repeat themselves. Just letting you know for, for future, for, for, for pilots who are watching this. Oh, they hate, oh, oh, hate it, 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 hate it. And it's like, bro. And that's another thing. Pilots, you must lie. You must lie. I would issue a guy a clearance, right? I would say, what would you do? Read back correct. Contact tower 119.9 when ready for taxi. This nigga would taxi to the holding point. Contact tower. And tower would be like, wait, Ori, why are you moving? I'm like, mm hmm. Then you ask him, hey, why are you moving? Uh, the clearance delivery guy said I could taxi to Admiral Mordose. Clearance delivery don't even know who you is, bro. Hey, look at this dude. I said, boy, what did that man just say? He said, don't worry, I know he lied. 
Bro, I did not say that. I did not. I did not, bro. Stop capping, bro. Damn. Let's get back to the video. Wait. Yeah, let's get back to it. Directing traffic on the ground, telling planes which runway to taxi to. So in the case of an approach and landing, it might start with the local control saying this to the pilot. I have. It'll be Delta 222 runway 8 left, wind calm, clear land. We'll turn it over to the ground controller as they exit. Delta 222, contact ground 119.2. They'll go over to ground control. Ground control will tell them which direction to taxi to get them over to the ramp. Controllers have universal rules to follow to make sure everyone is safe. First, there's the lingo. All right, 1123, taxi ramp, keep moving, traffic behind you, have a good day. The international language for air traffic control is English. They also have special terminology, so you don't need to be confused. Well, we're two seven right, follow southwest. The guys at uh, Chicago O'Hare or PDK or Atlanta Tower say the same things for most of our control instructions. It doesn't deviate, and that consistency is what helps us keep communications down to a minimum. Minimal yep. talking is important because every plane yep. and every controller hear the same radio frequency. You know, all on the same telephone call, 15 airplanes here in Atlanta. Short calls aren't the only way controllers ensure efficiency. I have a next question. If you hear me talking, if you hear somebody talking to another plane, why the hell are you jumping in? Nigga, I know you did. We, we know you did, nigga. Wait your turn, bro. Wait your turn. And stop stepping on people, man. I don't understand that. Pilots, please, These go in the comments and tell me why you'll do that. track of all the planes moving through that process. Each one represents a plane. It has the flight number, the airline, the city the plane's going to or coming from, and the departure or arrival time. Once the flight plan is generated at its proposed time, as you've seen right here, these will print out. This uh, flight Delta 1904 is the international flight from Atlanta down to Marigold. Uh, this is Delta 904. And this aircraft here is a Boeing 757-200. This airplane is scheduled to depart at uh, 1542 Zulu. When he departs, he's, gonna, he's requesting to go to 37,000 feet. So this strip would then, once it's ready, they place it in one oh, of these they doing different. So you'd find the Delta 904, which is at Echo 9. They place Echo 9 on here and slide it to the appropriate side. A controller will have four or five of these strips active at once. This is how they sequence the planes in order of priority. The passenger doesn't see the bigger picture. The pilot thinks, I'm going to sit in a while. The reason why he's holding is because we're trying to provide that sequence so that we can get maximum capacity out at one time. Sequencing can help move planes along quicker. But how exactly does it work? Here's an example. If two planes are going the same direction, say to San Antonio and Houston, they have to be at least four miles apart, so they don't run into each other in the sky, which means time waiting between takeoffs. But if a controller alters the sequence using those strips... So in this case, this is a west, a north, and a west. This aircraft's going to San Antonio, this aircraft's going to Milwaukee, and this aircraft's going to Houston. So we can depart 6,000 feet down the runway and airborne and roll all these. That Milwaukee flight can take off right behind the San Antonio flight. And now they've had three planes take off in the same amount of time. It makes a big difference for the ground controller to actually provide a good sequence because it's efficient and the aircraft can keep going at the fastest rate. Ah, uh, see that's what I tell you? Ground, no sleep on ground. Fewer delays. If there are major delays, it disrupts air travel all throughout the country and parts of the world. In 2018, Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport was ranked the best airport in the U.S. for flight delays, with the highest percentage of on-time departures. 15 airplanes, we're looking at a minute behind one another, so it's not bad, 15 minutes. But of course, some things are out of their control. You can go upstairs and you can look up uh, out of that window and you can see nothing at all and still have movement taking place on your airport. Yeah. You know, just, uh, days like today, clear in a million, that's what we call it, when it's just a beautiful sunshine day and you can see forever. We can move a whole bunch of airplanes. It's 132 an hour, I believe, is our arrival rate max. On Damn. a typical day, we try to stay right around in the 120s. Controllers also have to contend with inclement weather. Sometimes planes can't land on their first attempt, so we'll have to pull up, circle back, and get in line to land again. You have to be ready to make a decision. Go in the hole. Get this airplane back up into the air, back over to the next air traffic control facility so that they can resequence them back into our pattern. Luckily, some technological advancements have made this whole process a lot easier. Remember those strips? So a lot of this is automated now. While controllers may still use the physical strips, they also show up on monitors. 
and are automatically sent over to the next controller in the sequence. Also, technology means weather isn't as debilitating as it once was. Yeah, there used to be weather, a time when weather would shut your airport down. But now... Being able to forecast and project when that weather's coming, we're not surprised like we used to be. We go in the clouds sometimes, and that's when our equipment is, is all we got. As DX, radar, and GPS positioning help controllers track a plane. We're able to use that technology now to actually separate and identify where those airplanes are legitimately. So we can use the term clear for takeoff even though we can't see the physical runway any longer. But all that technology doesn't mean these controllers can be any less diligent. They have to be focused mm -hmm. and undistracted nonstop. This is the busiest airport in the world. The number, the volume, I don't think many airports can handle what we do. That's the truth. That's up to them. They got all their traffic controllers, especially ones in Atlanta, man, for sure. And Captain, if, 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 if there's a delay in Atlanta, there's a 90% chance that the whole world can experience a delay, especially in the U.S., for sure. Like, say, the Caribbean, we can experience delays, too, for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Smash that like button, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. If you guys want to see more loving from your fat boy, Ari, my name is Ari. I'm your FFP. With that being said, yeah, until we meet again, remember to be happy, be blessed, and the world is yours. Peace.